All right, so anyway, um, this is a Swan Gans catheter, um, Dr. Swan, Dr. Gans, and you'll see a whole bunch of different ports. We'll go over that in just a second. So old school, we used to um, put inject some ice water, ice cold water in here, like 10 cc's of ice cold water right in here. And then we would put a thermometer at the end of the Swan Gans, and then we would extrapolate how long it took for the ice cold water to get to the thermometer and measure flow or cardiac output. So now someone who was very smart invented a way that we could heat up blood. So we heat blood up right here and that as it travels down this thermometer kind of thing right here on your, on your catheter, this measures how cold it gets over that short period of time. And this gives you a continuous cardiac output which of course is a lot more, um, a lot more uh, definitive than injecting 10 cc's because obviously that's got other errors involved with uh, in trying to inject ice cold 10 cc's into a syringe to measure its temperature. All right, so anyway, that's your basic Swan Gans catheter and the, there's several ports. Let's see, we'll eliminate the ports that go to the computer. These three ports will go to the computer. And so what you have is a balloon port at the end of the swan, as I'll show you in my little diagram here, at the end of the swan is a balloon. Now this doesn't work. Um, the balloon doesn't work because it's an old uh, used swan. If you press down on the balloon, you'll inflate the balloon here and that the balloon, when it's inflated, it's about the size of a uh, cap, a Heplot cap. All right, so it's important that you do a couple of things with a balloon. This is a special syringe. It's got a little stop right here, so I can't withdraw any more than that. So I can't inflate the balloon with any much more than air than, than that. And so when I inflate the balloon and it's already inserted into the pulmonary artery, when I inflate the balloon, I want to be very careful that um, I do it slowly and watch my monitor. So sometimes I might only need a little bit of air to inflate this to get it to wedge, to get my occlusion pressures on my pulmonary artery. I'll go over that in just a little bit. But anyway, I don't necessarily have to inflate the entire balloon. So I just want to go really slowly with inflating the balloon. It's a passive deflation, so you kind of just let it go back to where it was before, and then after it goes back to where it was before, you just take the syringe off and let the air passively uh, leave for a couple of seconds, and then you insert the closed syringe, so close the syringe, close the syringe, and you put it back on to the catheter. All right, no messing with the locks. The reason why the locks are here is when a physician is inserting the pulmonary artery catheter on his or her own, then they can inflate the balloon. And while the balloon's inflated, they can lock the balloon inflated. And so they can insert the, they can float the pulmonary artery catheter Without, um, without having someone to deflate and inflate the balloon. So that's just for uh, the, the operational issues for the physician to insert the pulmonary artery catheter. So leave that unlocked. And then if you are done with your wedge pressure, then you can, um, or your pulmonary artery occlusion pressure, then you can just leave the syringe like that. All right, so those are the four ports. This is going to go into your inferior vena cava, and then this is your VIP port. I think it stands for a very important port, but I'm not exactly sure what VIP stands for. But anyway, your inferior or superior vena cava, if it's depending on where it's placed, I'm gonna inject some tap water. So it's right there. And the rip roaring question is: Can you um, can you give a bolus through your VIP port? And so there's your VIP port. So yes, you can give a bolus through your VIP port. 
But obviously, since this is going to be facing the lung tissue, you do not want to give a bolus through your PA port. All right, so that's your PA port. It's at the very end. Okay, so a little bit about right and left heart blood pressures. Your right heart, this is your inferior and superior, your superior inferior vena cava. This is your right heart. Your right heart pushes to your lungs through your PA, your pulmonary artery, right? And then your lungs gets blood to the left heart. It's very passive. And so your left heart pushes blood to your arms and legs. I couldn't figure out how to draw a foot, sorry. Um, so anyway, if your right heart were to fail, you would get back up into your arms and legs, causing your peripheral edema. So that you'll get your what the edema is that you can see. Edema. Sorry. All right, so if your left heart fails, the heart is having a hard time pumping to the arms and legs, and you'll get blood backing up into your lungs. So you'll get pulmonary edema. The, um, those right? So you'll get your RELs because fluid is backing up into your lungs and then therefore your lungs are just going to fill up with, uh, with fluid and then you might have that RELs sounding breathing and or you might even have that pink and frothy type of breathing where you're actually having secretions that are pink and frothy. Alright, so anyway, um, the way to insert the pulmonary catheter is through your uh, vein, through your inferior vena cava, and of course your inferior and superior, superior vena cava have your CVP, so there's not much of an artery, I mean a systole or a diastole. Once it reaches the, um, then you'll inflate the balloon, and then the balloon will carry that, the inflated balloon will carry that into your atrium, your right atrium, and you'll receive a, a, a systole and a diastole in your right atrium. And then as you feed that into your ventricle, you'll also get a different waveform, and we can go over that later. You'll get a different waveform in your right ventricle. And as that balloon, because it's inflated, travels in the bloodstream into your pulmonary artery, right? It becomes what, what's the namesake is a pulmonary artery catheter. <clears throat> and we insert that. Once we insert it further, what happens is it gets to the point of the pulmonary artery where the balloon gets wedged, and that's the reason why we call it a wedge pressure, uh, but technically some people like to call it a occlusion pressure. Kevin? All right, so um, your pulmonary artery is here with your balloon that's inflated, it is now wedged, and what happens is once the balloon is inflated in, a, in its position correctly, it occludes all of the pressure on this side and only monitors the pressure on this side. So therefore, if your balloon was inflated here, you're, you're only monitoring this side of the heart. So you're monitoring the left heart function when you're balloon is inflated. When your balloon is deflated, you're monitoring the pressure of the pulmonary artery. Does that make sense? All right, so anyway, um, let's go through that again. Your CVP port is in your inferior or superior vena cava. Your VIP port is usually in the right atrium or in your um, inferior or superior vena cava but your PA port is way over here next to your lung, all right? And so you do not want to withdraw a lot of blood through that. Unlike your A-line, which in your A-line, you're having a lot of pressure backing up into your catheter, and so you can withdraw fairly fast on your A-line. Or your CVP, which is large, the volume itself of your um, inferior superior vena cava is fairly large, so you can withdraw a fair amount of blood at one time 
your PA is very close to the lung tissue itself. So you don't want to either push fluids through your PA line, and you certainly don't want to withdraw too quickly from your PA line. Plus, if you withdraw too quickly, you actually get aerated blood from the lungs. That's the reason why you want to do that super slowly. I say one cc every 10 seconds, pretty slowly. All right, so anyway, that's just your brief introduction to your pulmonary artery catheter or Swan-Gans catheter.